In the 1990s, American railroads believed that only the heaviest locomotives could be trusted with high-speed passenger trains, a mindset that made the new 268,000-pound GE Genesis an object of ridicule. Dismissed as too lightweight and doomed to fail, it was accused of being unstable, fragile, and wholly unsuited to the country's demanding railways. Yet within years, this controversial engine would not only shatter expectations, but become the fastest passenger locomotive in United States history. Why did an industry obsessed with mass resist innovation so fiercely? And what finally forced them to change their minds? Throughout the 20th century, American railroads measured a locomotive's worth by its weight. Mass meant muscle. For decades, passenger trains thundered across the country behind steel giants like the EMD F40PH, a machine tipping the scales at nearly 373,000 pounds. This was no accident. Heavyweight locomotives were seen as the only safe choice for high-speed passenger service. More weight promised better traction, smoother rides, and, most importantly, stability on rough, uneven tracks. Railroad engineers and managers viewed mass as a kind of insurance policy. If a locomotive was heavy, it was assumed to be powerful, reliable, and able to handle anything from icy mountain passes to the endless stretches of the Midwest. By the early 1990s, this thinking still dominated the industry. The F40PH, introduced in the late 1970s, had become the backbone of Amtrak's national network. With a V16 diesel engine producing 3,200 horsepower and a rugged steel frame, the F40PH was built to last. Its sheer bulk helped it cling to the rails at 110 miles per hour, pulling trains packed with passengers and baggage. In the eyes of many railroaders, the F40PH represented the gold standard, a proven design that did not take risks with new materials or untested engineering philosophies. Fleet statistics from this era tell the story. The average mainline passenger locomotive in the United States weighed well over 350,000 pounds. This was more than just a number on a spec sheet. For railroad decision makers, a locomotive's weight was a direct reflection of its ability to deliver safe, dependable service day after day. The heavier the engine, the greater the trust placed in it by crews and managers alike. Dr. Michael Sloan describes the era this way. In the 1990s, American passenger railroading was still locked into a mindset that equated weight with safety and reliability. The assumption was that if you tried to lighten a locomotive, you were gambling with physics and with people's lives. This heavyweight orthodoxy shaped every aspect of locomotive design, procurement, and even public perception. When a new engine arrived on the scene, its acceptance or rejection often came down to a single question. Was it heavy enough to be trusted? For many in the industry, the answer had to be yes. Anything less was simply unthinkable. When the GEP42DC first rolled out in 1996, its weight was the first thing everyone noticed. The number jumped off the spec sheet, 268,000 pounds for railroad managers and engineers raised on the gospel of heavy steel. This was a shock. Decades of tradition taught that a passenger locomotive needed mass, real heft, to be trusted at speed. Now here was a machine nearly 100,000 pounds lighter than the F40PH that had ruled the rails for years. In trade journals and industry meetings, doubts spread quickly. Could something this light stay glued to the rails at 90, 100, or even 110 miles per hour? Would it bounce and sway on rough track, risking passenger comfort or even safety? The skepticism was not just technical, it was almost personal. Many saw the P42DC as a gamble that put efficiency ahead of proven stability. At the time, the average mainline passenger locomotive in the United States weighed well over 350,000 pounds. The P42DC's 268,000-pound frame seemed, to some, 
like a miscalculation waiting to happen. Critics pointed to physics. Less weight meant less downward force, which could mean less traction and more wheel slip, especially in wet or icy conditions. There were mutters about wind gusts pushing a lighter engine off course, or long trains overpowering the locomotive's ability to keep its footing. Some engineers wondered if the lighter frame would hold up to the pounding of daily service, or if the ride would become harsh and unpredictable. Trade publications from 1996 captured the mood. Headlines questioned whether the new Genesis series was fit for the future or flirting with disaster. Editorials debated whether Amtrak was trading away reliability for the sake of fuel savings and modern looks. Railroad veterans quoted in industry forums warned that lightweight and high speed rarely mixed well in American conditions. The skepticism was not just talk, it shaped how the P-42DC was received in its earliest months. Some host railroads hesitated to allow the new engines on their lines at full speed. Others demanded extra monitoring or restricted the trains to lower speeds until the locomotives could prove themselves. The 268,000-pound figure became a rallying point for critics. It was repeated in technical bulletins, safety briefings, and union meetings. For many, it symbolized everything risky about abandoning the old rules. The P-42DC was lighter, yes, but was it ready for the real world of American railroading? Until the locomotive could demonstrate its strength in actual service, doubt would remain. The stage was set for a contest between tradition and innovation, with the P-42DC's reputation hanging in the balance. Engineers at General Electric faced a challenge that went beyond horsepower or speed. The real test was structural. How could a locomotive lose nearly a third of its weight compared to its predecessors, yet remain strong enough to handle the relentless pounding of American tracks? The answer came from a leap in design thinking, borrowing as much from aerospace as from traditional railroading. Instead of building the P42DC around a heavy steel frame, GE and their German partner Krupp Verkehrs Technik crafted a self-supporting monocoque car body. This approach meant the outer shell itself carried the stresses of daily operation, distributing forces across the entire structure rather than concentrating them on a central spine. Cesar Vergara, Amtrak's manager of car design, shaped the Genesis series with this philosophy in mind. The P42 Smooth, streamlined body was not just for looks. Every curve and angle was calculated to handle dynamic loads at high speeds while meeting the tight clearance limits of the Northeast Corridor. The shift to monocoque construction allowed for thinner, lighter materials without sacrificing strength. Instead of relying on mass to absorb shocks and vibrations, the P42DC depended on geometry, arches, ribs, and carefully placed reinforcements to create a rigid, resilient shell. This collaboration with Krupp brought European high-speed rail expertise into the American context. The result was a locomotive that could withstand the same brutal forces as its heavier ancestors, but with far less dead weight. Engineers used computer modeling to simulate stress points and to refine every joint, weld, and panel. The car body's integrated design also improved crashworthiness, channeling energy away from the cab in the event of a collision. For railroad traditionalists, the idea of a locomotive that got its strength from design not sheer mass was hard to accept. But the P42DC's monocoque structure proved that modern engineering could deliver both safety and performance. By rethinking the very bones of the locomotive, GE and Krupp created a new kind of muscle, one that would soon show its full potential on America's fastest passenger trains. Raw numbers alone told a different story than the critics expected. The GE P42DC's heart is the 7F DL16 engine, a V16 diesel powerhouse tuned for 4,250 horsepower. That figure set it apart from nearly everything else on American rails in the late 1990s where older engines like the F40PH topped out at 3,200 horsepower, 
the P40T DC delivered more muscle with less mass. The result was a locomotive that could leap forward from a standstill. Pulling heavy passenger consists up to speed with remarkable acceleration. The secret was not just brute force, but the way that force was applied. With a total weight of 268,000 pounds, the P42DC's power-to-weight ratio was unmatched in its class. For every ton of locomotive, there was more horsepower available than in any previous Amtrak diesel. On paper, this meant the P42DC could accelerate faster, climb steeper grades, a recrow raise, and recover speed more quickly after station stops. In practice, engineers reported that the Genesis series felt livelier and more responsive than the heavyweights they replaced. The 7FDL16 engine itself was a product of GE's long experience in freight and passenger rail. Turbocharged and computer managed, it produced a smooth, steady flow of power across a wide range of speeds. Microprocessor controls kept wheel slip in check, distributing traction to the rails even under wet or icy conditions. This allowed the P42DC to use its horsepower efficiently, translating engine output into real-world performance that riders and crews could feel. Acceleration tests and early service records showed the difference. On routes like the Empire Builder and the Lakeshore Limited, P4 regularly shaved minutes off schedules compared to their predecessors. The locomotive's ability to reach and maintain 110 miles per hour in regular service was not just a marketing claim, it was a daily reality on key Amtrak corridors. For a design dismissed as too lightweight, the P42DC proved that smart engineering and sheer horsepower could deliver where it mattered most, on the rails, mile after mile, at speeds that made passengers take notice. Inside the cab of the P42DC, the old world of analog gauges and manual troubleshooting gave way to something far more advanced. General Electric equipped the Genesis series with a suite of microprocessor controls that transformed how the locomotive operated and how crews maintained it. The heart of this system was MicroSentry, a computerized diagnostics platform that monitored everything from traction motors to fuel injection, constantly analyzing performance in real time. For maintenance supervisors, this meant that the days of chasing down mysterious electrical gremlins with a multimeter were largely over. Instead, the P42DC could pinpoint faults on its own, logging issues, and even suggesting corrective actions long before a problem became critical. The impact in the shop was immediate. Instead of waiting for a breakdown on the main line, crews could schedule repairs based on digital alerts, cutting unplanned downtime and keeping more locomotives available for service. MicroSentry did not just watch over the engine, it governed wheel slip, adjusted traction, and balanced power delivery automatically. This level of automation was new territory for many railroaders. Veteran mechanics who once relied on intuition now found themselves reading error codes and consulting diagnostic screens. Some were skeptical at first, but the results were hard to argue with. According to Amtrak maintenance records, the Genesis fleet consistently posted higher availability rates than the F-40 PHs they replaced, despite a lighter and more complex design. Another leap forward came with the P42DC's P42DC, head-end power system. Earlier locomotives struggled to supply enough electricity to passenger cars without sacrificing traction. The P42DC solved this with an 800 kilowatt alternator, the GTA33A1, producing 480 volt alternating current power for lights, heating, and air conditioning enough to run an entire train's worth of amenities even at idle. Unlike older designs, the Genesis could deliver full head-end power without draining performance from the traction motors. This meant no more trade-offs between passenger comfort and train speed, even on the hottest summer days or the coldest winter nights. For the people who kept the trains running, 
these changes were more than just technical upgrades. Maintenance supervisors recall how the new systems allowed them to predict failures, order parts in advance, and keep trains on schedule like never before. The P42DC's combination of digital diagnostics and a robust power supply did not just make it easier to fix, it made it harder to break. By marrying smart controls with a powerful integrated head-end power system, General Electric gave Amtrak a locomotive that was not only lighter and faster, but also tougher and more reliable than the heavyweights that came before. Doubts about the P42DC's strength faded quickly once the locomotive hit the rails. In daily service, these so-called lightweights ran at 110 miles per hour, matching or exceeding the speeds of the much heavier engines they replaced. But the real headline came from a series of test runs on the Northeast Corridor. There, a Genesis locomotive was clocked at 165 miles per hour setting a new record for an American diesel passenger engine. For engineers in the cab, the experience was unforgettable. One engineer recalled watching the speedometer climb, and the train was steady as a rock. No sway, no rattle, just pure acceleration. The data from these runs left no room for argument. The P42DC not only matched the stability of its heavier rivals, it delivered a level of high-speed performance that critics had said was impossible for a locomotive of its weight. Within months, crews and managers who once doubted the Genesis were lining up to request it for their fastest trains. The numbers, 110 miles per hour in regular service and 165 miles per hour in testing, spoke louder than any trade journal headline or union meeting rumor ever could. By the turn of the millennium, the GE P42DC was not just another experiment, it had become the backbone of American passenger rail. Amtrak placed 207 of these locomotives into service, a fleet that stretched from the Atlantic to the Pacific. On the California Zephyr, P42DCs powered trains through the heart of the Rockies and across the Great Plains pulling full consists over mountain passes that once challenged the heaviest engines. From the Empire Builder in the north to the Crescent in the south, the Genesis series became a familiar sight at stations and along the rails. Engineers who once doubted the lightweight design began to share stories of its resilience. One recalled running a winter consist over the Sierra Nevada, noting how the P42DC held its footing on icy grades where older engines had struggled. Another described the ease of handling, saying it is quick off the mark but steady when you need it. The locomotive's versatility allowed Amtrak to standardize operations across its vast network, simplifying maintenance and training. Production logs show that by 2001, every major long-distance route relied on the Genesis series with the P42DC leading the charge. The numbers told a story of widespread adoption. 207 units were built, each one proving that lighter did not mean weaker. Across the country, the so-called two lightweight locomotive was now the workhorse of American passenger rail. Today, as Amtrak's P42DC fleet still hauls passengers coast to coast, its legacy is more than speed or longevity. It is a reminder that progress often comes from questioning the obvious. As railroads worldwide confront urgent demands for efficiency and sustainability, the lesson endures. Innovation is not a risk, but a necessity. Sometimes lighter thinking delivers the heaviest impact. What do you think? Does rail need another revolution?